Welcome back and thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. And uh, we invite you to join us on WhatsApp 020 216 uh, with all your thoughts and comments. But the headlines this morning, Daily Graphic, EC to reduce voting time. It will allow early uh, collision of results. Finance Ministry to release 50 million Ghana cities for teachers transfer grant speaker. Defends Ghana Beyond Aid Policy and Yanni celebrates Fire Festival after 17 year break. The Ghanaian Times. At the GJ at 70 lecture, guard against fake news, Professor Kakari to journalists. And uh, Ghana Beyond Aid Saga, Professor Okwe defends president. My first day at school marked in Accra. Daily Guide, easy to cut voting time. Nana receives five envoys. Sarah Roberts. Rapist busted. Minister encourages women entrepreneurs. The finder. Free SHS placement frustrations. Disgruntled parents study students besieged secretariat. President encourages pitch winners to create jobs. And 22 Ghanaians deported from Saudi Arabia. Malcolm at 30, 60 lucky customers receive cars and motorbikes. The Herald. Government team on PDS detects fraud at Danwell Insurance. FDA bus owners of expired energy drink. Dismissed NYA bosses to collect end of service benefit. And Asamoa Boatin and John Buedu snub public service commission directive. The Daily Statement. The, um, the interview with Owusu Free Akuto on PFJ is, is there. Uh, 300,000 BC holders get school placements. And I'm better than Eric Opoku. General Mosquito steps up lobbying for NDC running mate. The Gold Street business, benchmark import value straight up levy for review. And, uh, well, finally, we will look at the publisher where it talks about fear that has gripped the Kumasi NDC after burning of party office and poverty killing MPs. They fight with you over Trotro. And that's what uh, Bagbin says. And I saw 20 men kill my dad, 40-year-old daughter of chief says. Easy to reduce voting time by one hour. And minister attends kindergarten again. Okay, so <laughs> interesting. My guest this morning, Kamal Ding Abdullahi, is a deputy national communications director of the NPP. Kamal, welcome. Been a while. Good morning. Thanks. Been a while, Hughes. How okay. Very well. And our MP for Yape. Kusaugu, it's, it's always uh, <laughs> plenty for me to say. Yeah, Kusaugu, yeah. Kusaugu, yeah. J Mr. John Jinapo is here as well. Honorable, welcome. Thank you for your time. Both, both of you have abandoned me for some strange reason, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, good that you're showing your faces, uh, finally. Let's, let's begin from the Electoral Commission's <coughs> office, where they're talking about reducing um, voting time by one hour, so they close polls at 4 p.m. And the EC boss would explain that People wait uh, until the, the voting time uh, is, is near or is ending, and then they come and queue up. Now, this will endanger the lives of the people, you know, our ad hoc staff, and also the security of the ballots and other issues. And so they want, they want to reduce it and then, and then ensure that this is properly done. But the key question that comes up is, would this be the panacea to these problems that she's enumerated? Or would it be for the Electoral Commission to spend some more time in educating the public, perhaps collaborating with NCC, to do voter education to prevent these problems altogether? John, start with you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm not very sure the problem is just about people waiting and coming to vote uh, at the tail end of the voting period. I'm not too sure about that because I do know that uh, when I was contesting as MP in some of the polling stations, People come at dawn okay. and queue. Mm. The honest truth is that some people would want to come and vote, go back and attend to some duties. Mm. For instance, farmers would like to come vote early in the morning mm -hmm. and go to farm. Right. Some would also want to come after farm and then they come to vote. Mm. And I think that the EC should look at it from that angle okay. and tackle it. Mm. The other issue has to do with efficiency. Okay. How long do people stay in the queue? I think it's something that all of us must avert our minds to and begin to address. Okay. Is it possible that we can reduce the time that you spend in the queue? Mm. Because you do recall that in the 2012 election, 
there were serious challenges with the biometric system. Absolutely. And you put your hand on the machine, the machine it's, it's is not recognizing. People had to wash with coke. Others had to use all kinds of things to clean their hands. And so can we ensure that the voting process is much more efficient? Mm -hmm. And then um, the numbers. Uh, normally, the norm is that you don't do more than 1,000 per polling center. Right. And so in some polling centers, you have A mm -hmm. and B. Somebody comes to join QA only to reach the voting center. Okay. And, and then you realize that, no, no, you're supposed, you're supposed to, be to be in B. And so these are issues that I think we ought to be looking at. I, I hope that the EC is that doing this in consultation with the parties. Mm -hmm. It is good that we receive the results in time. Okay. We do not want to see a situation where after 5, 6 p.m., getting into 9, 10 p.m., people are still in the queue. Right. It creates unnecessary tension. It creates unnecessary problem. What it then means is that it's possible that in a particular polling station, results will be declared. Okay. In another polling station, people will be in the queue voting, still voting. <laughs> and so let's look at it from a holistic point of view. Involve the political parties as much as possible. Let's build consensus. I think that the electoral process ought to be done based on consensus building. Mm -hmm. Once we build consensus and we begin to educate, like you said, what's the role of the NCC? How do you bring on the political parties? Even you, the media. Right. Or these days you have a plethora of radio stations and every morning people listen to radio stations in the local languages and all that. And so I think that we should deepen the process, we should deepen the engagement mm. and ensure that we bring more people on board so that if collectively we believe that that is what will work for us mm. as a country, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. But we shouldn't do things in a unilateral manner. Let's build consensus. Thank you. <coughs> well, will this solve the problems uh, that the EC boss identified? Uh, this is it. Well, um, to my brother John and also the viewers out there. Um, Johnny, election is what we use to promote our democracy and get it growing mm. as we all want it to. I have no doubt that mm. the last time I checked, the Supreme Court of Ghana had cause to say that elections mm. are won at the polling station. And this was quite a very declarative statement and a very clear one to all of us. Mm -hmm. And what it points to simply means that <clears throat> we should always get the management of the polling stations right. Mm -hmm. If we're able to get it right, you know, and all stakeholders agree mm -hmm. to the processes therein mm -hmm. or there, of course, at the end of the day, there will not be questions raised after the elections. Mm -hmm. Now, the honors now then lies on the Electoral Commission to ensure that such processes are gotten right mm. and such management is indeed right. Mm. Now, if today we have the commission coming out to propose, of course, it's at the proposal stage. I believe that um, at IPAC meetings, they will have to deliberate mm. further on it, look at how the pros and cons will go mm. before maybe all parties will agree as in you know, the way forward. Then they then try to implement it. However, mm. let us not also say that it's subject to IPAC's approval. Because already the law gives them the mandate okay. to ensure mm. that processes are adhered to and better processes are put in place for them to move on. We cannot start. One of their stop key them. mandates is to educate the public on the electoral process. That's what they're doing. I think that's, that's the, the reforms. The reforms, the reforms are coming. Mm. They are looking at what they can do to ameliorate our voting process. Mm. One of them includes the time reduction. Okay. If you listen to my brother John, but the way he spoke about it, he's not actually, as it were, against it. Mm -hmm. But there are other, you know, issues that we need to look at. Right. Efficiency, mm -hmm. numbers at the polling station, mm -hmm. very critical. Okay, there's a polling station. I think we have a threshold in a way. I think within the EC, they have a threshold up to thousand or so, mm -hmm. or a little right. above thousand. Right. It shouldn't be right. about two thousand. Where above. they have more than that, they divide it into A and B, mm -hmm. so that we can have six hundred here, four hundred there, or something. Then, of course, it will help up. So they should look at the numbers, ensure that indeed the polling stations arrangement are clear. Mm -hmm. And if they do that, I think the reduction of the time for me will be better for all of us. Mm -hmm. Why? In Nigeria, polls are open at eight. Mm -hmm. Closes at 2 p.m. Right. Look at their population. 
In, you, no, I'm not. I'm not. With a, with a good respect, I'm not saying. You see, sometimes we juxtapose. We we'll look at well, what, what, somewhere. Is, what is it These that they are do? There. What is it that they do? What there is it that they do in terms of their uh, technical capacity? And is the point I'm making? You see, that's why I spoke about efficiency, mm -hmm. and he spoke about efficiency. Okay. If we need to make sure that election-related materials get to the polling station early, mm -hmm. let them get there early. Okay. Enough. If the polls are opening at 7 a.m., make sure every single thing is done for you to open the polls at 7 a.m. Now, we are moving from 7 a.m. to 5. Mm. I just gave an example of Nigeria. I'm saying that it's doable because in Nigeria, they have 8 to even 2 p.m. Right. Are you getting my point? We have 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mm. Are you getting me? And look at population-wise. Of course, we can't compare our population to Nigeria. Mm. Okay, the entire Ghanaian population is just like the Lagos state population, right. as it were. Right. But yet, this is what they have made an arrangement. It means that this talk about somebody who would like to go to farm, can't be forced to vote, somebody would like to do this. But that's the there reality. It's a reality. Of, of, of a lot more people. It's a reality. But regulations are put in place, and that is why we have somebody to supervise. Mm. Electoral Commission says that adequate publicity, which we spoke about, yeah. let them tell us that polls are opening at 7, mm. closing at 4. We all know, well educated, well published. Everybody knows that. So they, the they, farmer they, who they, wants they, to go and come commission, the electoral commission, commission. I've told Dr. Bosman Asari yes. this. I told them that look, the electoral commission comes alive when there's an activity to be done. Immediately after that activity, they go back to bed. But their job is to have continuous public education. Another matter that I have come to realize, and which I'll throw to, to you to, to look at, yeah. is the remuneration for the ad hoc staff that they bring. Mm. So let's say the three of us around this table mm. always are participating on an ad hoc basis for the yeah. Electoral Commission. Mm. So we are gathering experience, we are getting expertise, and we are able to inject it each time there's an electoral process. If you don't pay me my small kwacha, Sometimes and then I lose interest you are not motivated. and I don't come yeah. again. Then you are getting a you're new person to come in, yeah. and we we'll start the process all over again because he's not learning on the job. Oh, quacha, and, quacha and, means what? Money? Yes. Cash. Yes. Oh, okay. That's because right. if I work for I mean, you, I, I do, know that's okay. I do a referral. I just you. want. To, oh, I wanted to clarify right. that maybe the, right. the listeners might exactly. not know no, what no, quacha is. Well, the point is, you see, the point is that everything about election must be taken serious, mm -hmm. and you see. The bane of see that our election serious? problems or the bane of our serious? electoral issues has always to do with no enough publicity, no adequate publicity, no enough education for us. It's the bane. But if there's enough education, mm. of course, and everybody is well informed mm. as to how the processes will go, and we, the political parties, who are also critical stakeholders, mm -hmm. will take up the, the job also to educate our, if you like, supporters. Mm -hmm. Do what we call voter education. To get our people to understand that, of course, we are all going to help bring uh, a better democratic, mm -hmm. you know, you know, environment for all of us. But for me, I think this timing thing is a good proposal. Okay. They should look at it, and the reasons alluded to them or mm -hmm. given to them now are great reasons mm -hmm. to say that. Look, at the end of the day, we will not go into the night okay. voting, which my brother has been spoke about. Sometimes you go somewhere and there's election, and trust me, someone is still in the queue at about almost nine to ten p.m. Okay, so with all of these things, we look at it mm -hmm. and then we see how it goes. For me, it's a, it's a good proposal, sure. but they have to look yeah, at two minutes. Okay. Yeah. Even if you don't deal with the numbers and efficiency and you reduce the hours by one, mm -hmm. it doesn't solve the problem. Okay. Assuming people stay in the queue up to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. and you reduce the hours by one, it means that they will stay in the queue up to 9 p.m. Right. That's why I said that you must look that at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're looking for you're, you're, you're looking for, for, looking for, for solutions. Efficiency. overall efficiency. Yeah, you're looking for solutions. You've identified a problem, you want to cure the problem. You don't cure that problem halfway. Okay. If somebody has malaria and you want to give the person uh, treatment, you don't treat the person halfway. Mm -hmm. You do the full course. I don't know. It's even worse than. That's what I'm saying. That let's take time. Let's consult further. Okay. Let's have a holistic approach mm. so that at the end of the day, we shall have a credible election. Elections is not just about what happens at the police station. Mm. It's not just about winning at the police station. Mm. The process is before, during, and even after mm -hmm. the electoral process. And like you said, we must continue to engage in a continuous reform. Right. It shouldn't just be during election processes. Mm. Uh, the EC must work with the... Uh, the the NCC National Commission for, for Civic, Civic Education. Education. Because they play a key role. Right. They are on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so when they work together, uh, some have even proposed that the NCC and the EC 
should be merged together. Okay. Some have proposed that. Okay. So that to have one body. The NCC becomes a wing for because their, their budgetary allocation is always insufficient. But these are issues for discussion. Right. We are growing a nation, we are developing a country. Mm. We must continue to engage, we must continue to get the best mm. and look at the best example. So okay. We must get to a level where uh, with this mobile penetration, mm. if things go well, you don't even have to go and queue. Right. I should be able to vote from the comfort of my home. Well, but we'll get there. Okay. Let's continue to improve uh, and to deepen okay. the process. Well, the, the Electoral let Commission let also see. says it's setting yes. up a public affairs department. It's never had that before, <coughs> public affairs, I think, audit and one other. So we hope that uh, it, will, it will bring they, some... They've had a communication outfit. No, no, they've had one person doing communication. Not at the uh, decentralized. Yes, yeah. but oh, they want to have a public affairs department. department. Exactly. That, that's that's that will that's run... That. Pure PR. I'm sure that, that will cure this publicity exactly. issue that we're talking about. And let me seize the opportunity to appeal to every single MPP member who is mm. watching this morning. Let us take this exercise of the voter exhibition seriously. Mm. Let us go out there, make sure that your name is actually indeed on the roll, okay. and you will look at it so that at least you would be a good citizen and you will be a great party supporter. Thank you. I, I'm sure it goes for every Ghanaian. But let's look at page 21 of the Ghanaian Times. It says, NDC flays government for failing corruption fight. And the General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, Johnson Asidu Gejia, <coughs> says, President Kufuado has and the new patriotic party have lowered the standard for the fight against corruption. Addressing the media on Tuesday, Mr. Asidu Gejia insisted that the president lowered the bar for the fight against corruption at the bar conference. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, and uh, he says uh, he, President Kufuado's failure to admit the existence of corruption in his government is a very clear indication that he doesn't even recognize the problem and cannot uh, be counted upon to address it. Because if you don't know the problem, how can you solve it? He quizzed. John, why, why are you worrying the government uh, of the day? And the president has been clear. He says, look, I don't clear people. The institutions do, and we shall allow the institutions to work. Kojo Ponkrumah said, look, when uh, Obama came here and he says we should create stronger institutions, we're all happy and quoting them. So what, what is your difficulty in trying to, well, okay, uh, what's that? Is that Bible? No, I want to quote from some. Okay, you want to quote, you want to quote <laughs> something? I need some information for, okay. for your viewers. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm happy you brought This is hilarious. Okay. <laughs> You know what I do? <laughs> what I do is that I keep almost every record from Parliament. Okay. And so as you see, this document, you've seen that I've put a lot of exactly. tags yeah. there. These are reports from Parliament. And this very book, okay. there are three of them, contains all the outings. Okay. Because at the beginning of the budget cycle, we would approve the budget. Okay. Then at the next budget cycle, the agencies, departments, and especially the ministries, mm. would have to finish us with the budget outings. Right. And so I've taken it upon myself to... To collate, to collate all yeah, of them. So that okay. Because we must deepen research. Mm. We must encourage uh, <coughs> knowledge acquisition. Mm. And so that's what I do. I also have... And that's for debates. I, and I'm trying to do a soft copy of them. Okay. That would have been easier. Because you put everything on cloud. Right. And then you can extract it. But that's how Parliament works now. We still do a lot of paper. Mm. And so I've had to In carry the system. I tell you, I have to carry <laughs> a lot of. Uh, this is a very important topic. And you see, I thought that the president had a unique opportunity to rally all of us together. Mm. And like you rightly said, we ought to be looking at building institutions. Mm. And so. When we create the impression that President Akufuado is the one who can resolve Ghana's problems, mm. as for President Akufuado, he alone can deal with corruption. President Akufuado is incorruptible. And then you target just one person and you try to create a myth out of that person. Mm. You begin to have some of the problems we are having. Okay. NDC had its challenge in dealing with the situation. Okay. MPP had its challenge in dealing with the situation. Mm. A future government will still have a challenge. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is to remain committed. The most important thing is to keep working and improving the and system. And you're not saying that? We don't, we don't, we don't believe so. Because Why clearly, don't you believe so? It's not even the NDC. Look, let's take the NDC aside. Okay. The CDD is spoken. Mm -hmm. Journalists have spoken. A lot of people have spoken. So when the president has a big platform, Mm. like that of the Bar Association, and he decides to go after the NDC. Mm. It doesn't resolve the problem. We voted the NDC out of power. Mm. 
It means that the people of Ghana thought that you could do something better. Mm. So if you come and it's all about NDC, NDC, a future NDC government should improve upon the current system. Mm. A future NDC government should set higher standards. Okay. That is the essence of life. That is why we go to vote. Mm. We don't go to vote just for you to come and lament and lament and lament. Mm. And I thought that, look, what the president ought to have done on that day mm -hmm. is to say that corruption is an institutional problem. As president, I'm determined to work. I cannot work alone. Mm. I need the opposition. Mm. I need the media. I need civil society. All of you, let's come on board and tackle corruption. Corruption has no color. Uh, it doesn't matter whether Akufuado is in power or not. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is to look at it. But what the president engaged in was petty politics. He said, if an appointee is cleared of any wrongdoing, the evidence as adduced and recommendations made by these agencies after the investigations are concluded are what cleared the accused persons, not myself. None of these agencies has ever indict, indicated <laughs> any pressure from the executive over their investigation. So essentially saying uh, he's not a clearing agent so, and the so, president so, is clearing himself. So very good. And then he sat there and said that in the past, when people are accused of corruption, they are promoted to the flagstaff office. The same platform, mm. the same president. Mm. And I know he was referring to Elvis Afri Ankara. The report by that investigative independent commission was made public. That of Pius has not been made public. The, the affair. It was made public. It's a publishing company. You can go and buy it. And they never made any findings against Elvis in respect of what the president himself was saying. Mm. This is a sitting president. He's not a candidate. So you're calling for that of Pius and Amhajri? No, I'm saying that he says, okay. that look, you just quoted them, that look, it's based on evidence. And that when they investigate and there's evidence mm. and the person is cleared, mm. he's not held responsible. Right. Yeah. At that same platform, he was chastising President Mahama okay. in respect of the Elvis Free and Cry situation. Right. And I'm saying, look at the two. Okay. President Mahama's time, there was an in investigative body, independent, <coughs> when they concluded the report, the full report was published. Mm. So the president was wrong. Number two, on the pious one up to now, mm. we don't know the content of that investigation. So what facts is the president talking about? This double standard. This double speaking. Look, viewers can I want viewers to make an informed judgment on what the president is saying. So he's so, blowing hot mm, and cold. So the president will refer, for example, the PPA boss to uh Shraj to OSP says deal with him and let's deal with the matter. The matter is under investigation. That's not enough for you. No, I think the president should be consistent. The example I've given clearly tells you that okay. the president is blowing hot and cold. Look, let's take the boss scandal. Mm. You remember the minister set up an investigative right. body. Even before the body, the eight member body started, we were told that national security has cleared the man. We didn't see the content of the report. Mm. Eventually, we are now being told that every accusation against that man mm. was right. So how can the president say that, look, it was based on facts? At least there's ample evidence to that it was not based on fact, and that the national security didn't do a good job. Mm. The national security is not an independent body. The president is the head of the national security. Right. He has national security. Mm. At least the minister set up an independent body. Let that body do its job and present the report. And so look, the issues we are raising, my brother, these are legitimate issues. These are not even NDC MPP matters. Mm. And then the president said, that, look, he has done so well. Okay. And that in the history of Ghana, mm. he has increased the budgetary provision for the judiciary right, right. has increased. Mm. That's why I brought this. Okay, report. that's why you brought the document. Yes. So let's read. Let's I read refer to page so three. Mark and have a, a this bag. is six point zero. Okay. Performance review. This and I want you to follow. Look, okay. this is monies for the audit service. Okay. Look at their capex. An amount of nine million four hundred and fifteen thousand was made pro provision for them. At the end of the year, this is a release. What do you see? <laughs> you tell me zero. This zero. This zero. So nothing was reduced. Nothing was released to them. Then but this is released, the sorry, judiciary mm. approved budget and actual expenditure of the judiciary in the judicial service for the 2017 financial year. Okay. This is from the Ministry of Finance. And you see, these documents are not prepared by me. Mm. If you go and look at who signed it, Equia Dorowa Osu Ejikum, clerk to the committee, Honorable Ben Abdallah Banda, chairman. 
He's an MPP chairman. Mm. Look at the outends. They made a provision, CAPEX, 21 million. Okay. A huge amount. What is the outen? Zero. Zero. And so when the president comes to tell us, I made budgetary provision, I made. The question is that what was the outen? Mm. That is the most important how much, thing. How much did you release? That is the for point. The so if you make a budgetary provision of 21 million. Okay. And at the end of the by end of November, mm. you haven't released anything to the judicial service for their capex. And capex has to do with the capital expenditure right. that will enable them to do, their, do work. their work. And then you go to the bar association and you try to run down the NDC and say that you increase the budgetary provision and yet you release nothing. What are we talking about? Come out. So, so unfortunate. The, the argument on the streets, and yesterday somebody used an analogy. He says, well, mm. there's, there's a murder. Somebody is dead. Another has been accused of killing this person. Now, there's a team that is set up. A jury declares the man who's been accused not guilty of the murder. But somebody is dead. And yet the jury is unable to say how the murder occurred or who committed the murder. And he likened it to what the president said and how things are panning out. The Pius and Amajide case, for example, where he has been cleared by a committee, but the report has not been published. The public has not been told who facilitated the movement of the 150 journalists to Australia. And he has not told us who is guilty if Pius is innocent. And that's the question. And, and they say that is not commitment to fighting corruption. What do you say? Well, <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, John started on a very good note. And on a note we should all, you know, go with mm. in terms of the, 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 the commitment or the show of commitment to fighting corruption. Mm -hmm. That yesterday they were not left out. That today the government of the day is not left out. That the day before yesterday, the government before them wasn't left out. So it means that we have a problem at hand. Do we admit we have a problem? Well, we've all admitted. <laughs> That's Why, not? A question. Why haven't we all admitted? When John was going for 2016 <laughs> election, as part of their manifesto, mm. as an NDC member, there was a page that captured corruption and spoke about the ills of it mm. and spoke about we fighting it. When I was going for a 2016 election, there's a page that captured corruption and spoke about the ills of it, and spoke about how we have to fight it. Same applicable or maybe applicable to other political parties. And I'm pretty sure, 100% sure, that their manifesto would capture the same. So it means, and not just we political politicians, mm. the clergy are on record. Mm. John alluded to the fact that CDD, which is also a think tank, right. has spoken about it. And it's not the first time CDD is talking about corruption. CDD has always, they can go into his research. He is a, 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 an expert of research. So we've lost now, over nine people. You know, yeah, I've not said, if they, look, they can, look, I'm <laughs> so saying that. You don't, you, have the, you don't trust the no. figures. No, listen to me. No, I'm let, asking, let me I'm make this point. I'm asking you a small no, question. Now, don't brother. let his interjection give you a No, no, no. Oh, oh. I am <laughs> saying come, come that. Come he's made a point. I have seen, I have seen Professor H. Kwesi Prempe's report from CDD. So it is not his interjection that is... We are not talking about figures now. We are talking about comments made by think tanks that he has made reference to. And, and I'm saying that those think tanks... A part of the comment says, we have lost $9 billion since 2017. Do you contest the figures or do you accept the figures I, as a political party I, in I, government? I don't just sit here. Then, of course, on the face of it, say that someone is lying or someone but, is But they didn't speak yesterday. Uh, obviously, they didn't when speak he was yesterday. speaking to a particular figure. But, but they didn't speak when, yesterday. Oh, oh, CDD, uh, CDD, CDD, John, 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 oh, John, Alaji, Alaji, You are distorting. Alaji, no, no, don't do this. Alaji, no, no, don't do this. No, Alaji, 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 I'm asking you a question. No, you are distorting my flow. Just allow me to go on. And I've not made I, a point I, yet. I'm, I'm asking. You know, you when make I'm a done, point. When I'm done, you can come with a question. I beg you. So with a respect. When I'm done, when I'm done, when I when I when I'm done making my point, okay. then you come with a question. Okay. With a question of respect. Okay. Let's move on. I'm so, saying that so please he note, made we'll reference. Ask about nine no billion. I'm saying that he's made reference to CDDs talking about it. He's made reference to some people speaking about it. And I'm saying this is not the first time mm. that we've had think tanks, we've had CDD mm. talking about corruption. He has actually spoken about it, saying that look, it is a problem that has come or that has been with us for a very long time. 
every government has had its share. And of course, this is the approach that all of us mm. as Ghanaians, whether clergy, citizens of this country, wherever you are, let's view this thing as a canker. And I ask now, you, viewing does it as a this canker, government, how do we solve it? Come on, and yes. I ask you, does this mm -hmm. government accept the fact that there's corruption presently? That's maybe, my question. Maybe, maybe, maybe many list, many heard the president, but they didn't listen to him. Okay. <laughs> maybe a lot heard him, but they didn't listen to him. Okay. How do you mean? The president is the head of this government. Okay. And in fact, he is a first gentleman of this country. The president on the podium of um, the, bar, the bar conference, bar conference mm. said corruption was a fight that we all needed to put on, to be on deck. We all needed to be on board to fight. And that it wasn't an overnight fight. Mm. And that it was a process. This alone tells you clearly that we all admit that there's a problem within us. The president went ahead to say that anyone cited, mm. allegedly, of committing corrupt, corruption and, uh, you know, its related offenses mm. is directed straight mm. to the investigative or the right investigative bodies okay. to take care of it. Mm. It means that, impliedly, we all admit that there's a problem. And it also means that the president also admits that even within his government, mm. there has been cases of such okay. which has been referred to. So when you ask me a question, mm. whether or not we agree there's corruption in this, the president never denied there was corruption somewhere. Okay. We, I, I have never denied. Mm. Why? The NYA matter, as we speak today, is being investigated. Mm. It's an action that somebody thinks that it's an act of corruption. Okay. okay? Mm. We sit here, the PPA matter came up. It's also an act the, that the, somebody the thought it was the, corruption. The two deputy chiefs Absolutely. of staff. It's there. So these are all matters that have been investigated or have been investigated. So clearly, in the matter the of the fact deputy that chiefs of staff, they were cleared, weren't they? They were cleared? By who? Weren't they cleared? By who? The allegations was No, right. by who? Let me know. By who? But, but then the, the CID boss. Is the CID an investigative institution or not? Back Very good. Forth. I'm saying that the CID is it an investigation institution or not? When the CID boss is was Is it an institution or not? When the CID boss was caught on tape. Listen. Asking A plus. Oh, you are not doing the work for them no, or no, you I'm are asking. looking at what? Well. This is no record. Is this is not record. Is it Johnny, Johnny, ah, Johnny, Johnny? Is it Johnny? Is this not record? Is this not a public record? That the CID boss, that the CID boss was caught on tape what is telling material? A plus to bring drop the the matter because it will have an adverse effect on the government and the image of the president. Was it not? Was it not what it is? That's what. That's what the report said. That's what it said. Was there a report? That's what the investigation, investigative investigation report, or whatever, or that's what the investigation you're, you're not said. Your course, is that what they said? So, so the 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 voice note is inconsequential. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, you see, you see. When we want to do bidding, when we want to do our petty politicking, mm. okay, let's do it. I'm not him. I'm not saying I'm not 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 I'm that a matter has been referred to a particular institution. And the question is, is that institution an investigative body in this country or not? Are you Accepted not, by wait, wait, law? Are, yes. are you not worried, are you not worried that it? the head of that institution <laughs> mm -hmm. conducting the investigation mm -hmm. was caught on tape begging the accuser to drop the case because it will have an adverse effect on the government and the president? Are you not worried? That what? That, worried about that the head of that institution. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, not worried about <laughs> we, we shouldn't be worried. John, Johnny, we shouldn't Johnny, be worried. Johnny, Johnny, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be worried. Johnny, 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 Johnny. I get where you are coming from, and I understand you. Perfectly. Where am I coming from? That you all, all you want us to do, or all you want to see, mm. is that we have a body that has investigated. That of course, no one will raise right. issues right. against that body. Exactly. We want a right thing to be done. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. Are what you we're committed doing. to that as a government? We are committed solidly to it, okay. and we have always been committed to the rule of law. Mm. We are not in a banana republic. Okay. We are not mm. people who would go and embark on kangaroo, you know, um, as it were, trials. Okay. No, we would make sure that the rule of law works. Mm. And even if you listen to the bar association president, Mr. Fawson, he said. If somebody is put in a position of trust mm. and that person thinks or seeks to use that position mm. to enrich himself and his family wrongfully, then that person must be brought before the right investigative bodies mm. and the right institution, of course, possibly the courts, to deal, to be dealt with. Mm. So it means that 
he alludes to also the fact that we cannot just get up and say the mere fact that someone says somewhere and say with a great respect to John, John is a thief, then it means conclusive. John is a thief. The mere fact that someone say Kamal is a thief, mm -hmm. conclusive, Kamal is a thief. Okay. We can't just do this. So, so, that is so why if, we so if Kamal, if, if Kamal is not a thief or John is not a thief, mm -hmm. and yet something is missing at the time when he came into the room and went away, mm -hmm. and you clear him of the thievery, and the thing is still missing, we should be able to find who stole whatever is, is missing. <laughs> you see, is it not? You see, you mm. see, yes, that is why we have a word called suspect. Okay. Yes, but if you are suspect. Something could be missing, mm. and basically Kamal came into the room or Johnny came into the room and it's not John who picked it. Yes. That is why investigation then comes in. And the president rightly hit the room. So, so when you finish the, the investigation, tell me, that tell me let who took the investigation the thing. take place. Yes, but let tell me who took the thing. If I put my phone here and you come into the room and I suspect that you stole it and you say you didn't steal it, a body is put together to investigate. They clear you that you didn't steal it and yet my phone remains missing. I should be able to be told who took my phone or how my phone got missing, you correct? See, very good. Yesterday, I was on a different platform and a question like this was posed. And my answer to it was so short and tell simple. Me, tell me your answer. You know, we have all sat here as answer. a country. Mm -hmm. I'm repeating my answer. Mm -hmm. We all sat here to say, let's fight corruption. Mm -hmm. But we can't fight corruption in opacity. I agree. Mm -hmm. We can fight corruption with transparency. And the only way we can fight corruption with transparency is to make available reports, if you like, as you said, that if there's an issue and a report is supposed to be given or mm. published or mm. is supposed to come out mm. as it were, then that report should come out for all of us to feed ourselves to understand. Okay. That is if only the person is supposed to do that. Mm. And my answer to it is that, look, the president of the Republic of Ghana today, who many sit down mm. and think they can hang corruption on him, had the audacity, the courage mm. to say, look, the right to information law oh. that we all need ah. Must be passed so that whoever wants to is that access an information, but, 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 but it is. But, 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 but it is. But come on, it is. But 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 it is. As we speak, is it active? Has it been passed or not? Is it active? Has it been passed or not? But come out. He's a member of parliament. It's not a law. But no. Has it been passed or not? And so what? So has it been if passed it's not, if it's been so passed, the president has it. And, 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 and uh, if, 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 so if it's accepted to, what did they agree? Come out. What did they come agree out. on? If you pass a law. Oh. Okay. Is and you need prerequisites to satisfy to my brother. What is important? Look, you can you can you can seek to say that look, let's water down what is positive for all of us. Okay. But the Guinean populace who are watching us know very well that objectively, if you put together a law okay. which seeks to give you the empowerment mm. to move into an institution for an information that you so demand, okay. that person thinks that it is the right way to go. And I'm saying that if we have so, so publish if we the have report, a problem, publish listen, the report. If we have a problem, publish the pious report. My brother, if publish we have it. a problem. If you have a problem, publish the pirate Listen, report. If you have a problem, publish the, and the pirate problem report. Is that, and the problem is that, look, we are not getting this. I'm not getting this information. I'm not getting that. But there's a law that gives you the But the, I'm saying the, to the, you the that the law is not you go on and do yet. It. And I'm saying give the credit to the one who but has ensured that, that you would have that law. I mean, that authority to do what you want to do. It's, it's not, not effective. Oh. Yet. You cannot make it. So how do I go and apply my rights under the law? It's the process. They implemented it. And said that, look, we have time to move on. So until 2020, when the law is active, the report will be published. No, John, 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 you, you John, spoken John, and you don't want to John, end. John, it's not like I don't want to end. Of course, if he stops interjecting or if we all stop interjecting and let's move on, we have a discussion. No, that's why I'm making an application to my host. That this corruption you are matter, taking us. Okay. I'm talking about mm -hmm. all, all of us should see it as a problem. Okay. And we've all seen it as a problem. Mm -hmm. Let us all see how we're going to fight it head on and move. But if this blame game starts, this person says that person is that, that person is that. Then at the end, we do nothing. Why? I can give you myriads, series of the reports. I, I, I was hoping you were telling me when the report will publish. Would you know? Quickly, one minute. I, I, Chris, Chris I, I back agree with you. This person, I can give you a this person did of this. It. This person didn't do that. that okay. Is the solution. Tell the president to stop that. Okay. <laughs> He's the number one gentleman of the land. My brother. He should stop the unnecessary petty politics. And equally tell your general you secretary see, and yourself okay. and whoever to you stop see, the unnecessary petty Presta, politics. Presta, 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 Let's not keep you, the lady Equally right. tell yourself, John. You asked a genuine, <laughs> All right, legitimate so question. So we have a comment from WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can take a, <laughs> a look. It says, EC. 
AC, reduce voting time. It will allow early collation of results. The AC boss should know that she, had ne she has never conducted a general election before, and this has been tested to be good for many years by her predecessors. She must therefore be very careful to reduce the duration time from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. from Ablade Efia in um, Zongo Takradi. The stark reality is that the NDC wants to ride on this unsubstantiated corruption tagging in order to look saints in the eyes of the Ghanaian election. Unfortunately for them, this unproductive venture is not yielding any meaningful results since the president's resolve is fighting corruption in fighting corruption is conspicuously not in doubt. We as citizens have a pivotal role in helping erase the canker called corruption in our system. Kwesi Reynolds in Agona Odubin um, says, Good morning, Mr. John. Please tell the government that we need electricity in Periga and uh, Wale Wale around Mr. Baumia's house, please. Good morning, Johnny. Ask the EC why not change the time from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. since the voters start queuing a day before the voting day from Santa Maria in Abeka. Good morning, TV3. The EC should not reduce the voting period by one hour. They should get the equipment to use if if it gets dark after voting at 5 p.m. She should not be in a haste to declare the NDC winners because we are going to vote for them in 2020 from Yahuza Moshizongo in Tamale. Good morning, good people of TV3. The poor turnout of voters is simply because Ghanaians are fed up of deceits by politicians. Those days of going to queue early in the morning are over, not until our politicians begin to convince us that they can live up to expectations. The real 2020 election will not be different from what is happening now. Mesa from KGB in the OT region. Good morning, TV3. MPP government has nothing to offer to us. Let's vote NDC back to power from Kaka in Tamale. Anybody who pretends to be what he or she is not, and as a result gets what he or she does not deserve, would be faced with disgrace and scandals upon scandals. This is exactly what is happening to this 419 MPP government. Asanko from San Santa Maria. Uh, Hassan um, Wanwana in Wa says, EC proposal to change voting period from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. is very good and laudable. It's a very good and laudable idea because it will curtail some of the voting burdens and challenges at the polls. My greetings to Kamal, the PC Director of Communication for NPP. And the last one, I'm very, very sad to hear from our president, Nana Ado, that not even admitting there is wrongdoing in his appointees. Is it not the same person who was begging during opposition that we should try him? Now we have tried him, we have seen his arrogance. 2020, we shall see from Felix Boabin Sunyani Dumaswa. Okay. Thank you very much. Come out. No, my, my, come out. I, I, I have a quick question. I was wondering yeah. about so the C D D nine million nine billion. Yeah. Do, you want do you contest it or you do you accept it. the figure? Um I don't <coughs> doubt the C D D from giving out their figures. Okay. Um they have modalities in coming out with their research or in doing for performing their research and those methodologies of course would allow them to arrive at a conclusion. They would have to come out with what they have defined and tell them that look this is what we have found and this is what how much does what government we know we have lost now, to corruption? Now, now as we speak to you how you, much does right, government an know institution sits down does job mm -hmm. or go on a job <laughs> but for months come out with a report. Okay. I sit here and you tell me tell me how much government thinks we have lost to corruption. No no I said I how much no, but they didn't publish question. the report yesterday See, or this morning. Come out. Well, you can't do this. Come no, out. No, 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 no. He was, he was. I'm not disputing whatever CDD has. I'm asking you. And I'm saying that the CDD is not... He said he's not disputing it. So he's agree, he agree, they agree they have not it. got the right to say it. Okay. They have done their research. They've okay. done their job. Okay. They've come out with an information. We all, all know that though, this is what has come. Does and government think we have lost anything right. to corruption? Does right. government think hasn't, government, hasn't government referred corruption issues to investigative bodies? So how much have I'm we lost? I'm asking you How much question. have we lost? Hasn't government referred corruption issues to investigative that bodies? That does not answer my question. You're asking me another question. Let me see what you're talking about. The, 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 the government has referred matters to investigative bodies. It means that there was the there's a problem. The the CD, problem. CD, Come on, when are we publishing the results, the reports? He can tell you. He's waiting for a price for information. When? When? Hughes. He's, He's waiting for us for information. We can, we, can, we can continue to do our bidding, but let's do it nice. It's not bidding. Oh, I just have one point. <laughs> yes, you see, this nine billion. Mm. Look, if the minority Europe. in parliament mm -hmm. had not succeeded in blocking the Ameri deal mm. and the eight hundred million dollars had gone through, it means I would have lost another four point five billion. If you add it to the nine billion, mm. it means that by now I would have lost thirteen point four billion. The minority ought to be commended for preventing the Akufuado administration from hoodwinking Ghanaians with the Ameri deal. And you ought to commend the government of the day for saving mm. 
Eh, the Ghanaian populace. Mm. We have saved 4.7 billion. billion. Yes, but we have saved 4.5 billion from our government. And you know what? We I have saved 4.5 billion. billion. But, 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 after its implementation, <laughs> right Come on, right on the line. There's uh, the 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 deputy uh, for the N NPP. Come on, thank you. Good to see you again. And uh, also, the Honorable John Abdullahi Jinapo is the MP for Yape Kusaugu uh, constituency in the northern region. Thank you very much for coming, gentlemen. We're grateful for your time.